What's up, kings and queens? Welcome back to my channel. I am the Eva Monroe. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on my channel today. This is my most highly requested video ever, ever. <laughs> and it is about layering and blending your fragrances. So this is something I absolutely love to do. And you guys hear me talk about this all the time. In my own mind, I feel like I have created some masterpieces in layering and blending, but <laughs> I'm going to share with you guys today a few tips and tricks for layering and blending your fragrances. Some of these tips increase the longevity and the projection of your fragrances. Some of these tips just give your fragrance a uniqueness. They make them personal to you because that's the reason why I layer fragrances is just for two reasons I layer. I layer them to add a certain uniqueness to my fragrances. And then I layer fragrances if it's a fragrance that there are some things that I'm not really digging about it. So I will add something to it to, you know, make it what I need it to be. So keep in mind that there is no wrong way and no right way to do this. There really isn't. There are just a few things that you want to pay attention to when you start doing this. So here we go. So the very first thing you can do, of course, when layering your fragrances is you can use the matching shower gels and body lotions, body creams. Now, I don't have much nice at all to say about Joe Malone. You guys know how I feel about Joe Malone. However, her shower gels and her body creams, although a bit pricey, are really nice. They're really nice. They last for some strange reason, and they, they smell really nice. So this one that I have is Pomegranate Noir, but um, her shower gels are awesome. They lather up very well. So um, that, that would be the only part of Joe Malone that I enjoy. But that's one way to layer your fragrances. That I find if you use the corresponding shower gel and the body cream, then it just makes your fragrance last longer. Now, on the opposite side of that, all companies don't have the matching shower gels and body lotions. So if that's the case, I have showed you guys that I love the body shop. This is Orange Satsuma Body Lotion. And I layer this and blend this with everything. I, I wear this lotion with some fragrances that you couldn't even imagine. I wear this with Sunshine Man, um, my citruses, my um, vanilla fragrances. I will layer them with orange as well. They go very well together. So... Now, that brings me to my next thing, which is make sure that you are layering scents that are in the same family. So when you first start this, when you start out on this journey and you're trying to learn how to layer, you want to layer your woodies with woodies, florals with florals, orientals with orientals, so on and so forth, because things of like are attracted to each other, right? <laughs> so... Then the next part of that is you always want to layer a complex fragrance with a very simple fragrance. So a don't in this situation would be like, you would never want to layer Amouage Interlude Woman with Amouage Sunshine Woman. Don't ever do that. <laughs> that's, that's doing entirely too much because two complex fragrances have entirely too much going on and they're going to be competing with each other and fighting with each other, and you're going to have a disaster. So if you layer a complex fragrance with a simple fragrance, you cannot go wrong. Now, when using this method, always lay down your complex fragrance first and then lay the simple fragrance over the top of it because if you do it the other way around, the complex fragrance is going to simply drown out the simple fragrance and it's not going to smell like you did anything different. So I learned this with Oud Blue Notes, which I've told you guys before. Um, the very first time I did it, I laid down Oud Blue Notes 
and I laid eccentric 04 over the top of it. It was gorgeous. It toned down some of the oud. It freshened it up. It was like one of the nicest blends ever. And then the second time I came back to do it, I couldn't remember the order that I did it in. So I laid down eccentric 04 first, and then I laid oud blue notes over the top of it, and it smelled no different. It didn't smell like I had did anything different. And that was because oud blue notes had just totally consumed the eccentric 04. So always lay your complex fragrance down first, simple fragrance on top of it. Now, you guys always hear me talk about layering F and Fabulous with Lost Cherry, right? So you're probably like, well, those are two Tom Fours. Those are two complex fragrances. However, when you do this layering combo, I lay down F and Fabulous first, and then I lay Lost Cherry on the top of it. Because initially, when you smell F and Fabulous, you don't know what the hell's going on in here. You're like, okay, what am I getting? It takes a little while to be able to figure out um, what notes are really doing what in F and Fabulous. There's a lot going on in here. So, but when you smell Lost Cherry, you smell this and you're like, oh, okay, that's cherry or cherry and almond, basically. So I lay down Lost Cherry, I mean, I lay down F and Fabulous first, and then I lay Lost Cherry over the top of it. When you do it the other way around, which I have done on this hand, it doesn't it doesn't really make a big impact. It doesn't do anything different. But when you lay down that F and Fabulous first and put that Lost Cherry over the top of it, then you have a beauty. You have greatness, masterpiece. So this has become a hybrid somewhere. Everything is becoming a hybrid. That's another video though. So... <laughs> Complex first, simplicity over the top of it. Now, the next part of this is getting familiar with the three phases that your fragrance is going to go through. The top, the mid, and the base notes. Top notes, citruses, those are going to be your berries, your bergamot. Those are going to be in the top of your fragrance. Your mid notes are going to be your florals, your fruits, and your spices sometimes. And then in the base of the fragrance, aka the dry down, that's where all the heavy stuff is, like your patchouli, your vanilla, your musk, everything that's overpowering is in the base of the fragrance. So I always like to, before I'm going to decide exactly what I'm going to layer with a fragrance, I always smell it, see what's going on in the top, see what I get in the mid notes, and then see what I'm left over with in the base. So in the fragrance, when the fragrance dries down, if it's a very musky fragrance, then I'm probably going to add something to sweeten it up a little bit. Um, if it's overly citrusy, I'm probably going to add something to, you know, sweeten it up. If it's kind of blah and it needs some depth, then I'm probably going to add some musk to it, which brings me to my next thing. There are three layering scents or three layering things that you cannot go wrong with. Vanilla, musk, and citrus. Vanilla softens up a fragrance. It gives it a sweetness. Musk adds spice and depth. Citrus adds freshness to a fragrance. So with that being said, I always, always, always keep some vanilla oil on deck. Vanilla bean oil. You can do um, French vanilla, but always, I always like for it to be a very powerful vanilla that I'm going to use when I want to sweeten up or give give a creaminess or add a softness to a fragrance. Vanilla oil is something you cannot go wrong with. So let's say that you don't already have a vanilla oil and you don't know where to get one. You can create your own and you can create your own vanilla layering scent. You can create your own musk, your own citrus by using one of my favorite things to play in. And that is essential oils. I love, love, love essential oils. Now, not only can you use them to create layering scents, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. 
I feel like they help familiarize you with the notes and fragrances. If you're someone who you really want to learn what notes smell like on an individual basis, because that's important to me. I had two fragrances that had the same thing going on in them that I could not stand. And I didn't know what it was. I could not figure it out. Epic Woman was one, and I cannot remember what the other one was, but there was just something. I'm like, there's something in there that bugs me. It bugs me. It bugs me. So I went through my hundreds of essential oils, and I figured out that it is geranium that I'm really not checking for. It has to be well blended. Can't be a prominent note for me because geranium just doesn't do the do it for me. It has kind of a stinky smell to me. I just don't like it. So if you get familiar with the notes that you like and the notes that don't work well for you, then guess what? You save a little bit of money because you're not actually out there buying fragrances that are not going to work for you. You're not buying fragrances that are that consists of notes and things that you don't even like. So get familiar with the notes and fragrances. As time goes on, you're going to automatically be able to smell a fragrance and you're going to be like, oh, that's got patchouli in it and that's musk and I love the sandalwood here. But in the beginning, I feel like these help you. Now, as far as layering goes, of course, I have, you know, like your basic um, vanilla, your sandalwood, you know, things like that. I like to create my own little layering fragrances just with a carrier oil, which I use almond oil. Now, this is personal preference because I know people who like to use grapeseed. I even know people who like to use coconut oil. I use almond oil. And I use almond oil because of the fact that it doesn't solidify, which I find coconut oil to do depending on the temperature that it's kept at. And it doesn't have a smell. And that's the biggest thing for me. I feel like coconut oil sometimes has a little twang to it. So find the carrier oil that works for you. I get myself a little um, decant, a little vial or whatever. I will fill it up with my carrier oil. I'll add a drop or two of my essential oil. And then I apply that to my skin and lay my fragrance over the top of it. Or sometimes I will lay my fragrance down and apply my oil over the top of that, which is now the way I prefer doing it. So get creative with these oils when you buy them and you have them. You know, it's not just a matter of smelling them and then they're of no use to you. You can blend them. I take my Cafe Vienna, which is a coffee scent. This is like, this is the best coffee oil I have ever smelled. This is so good. It's just pure coffee, but I will blend it with some Tonka Bean Absolute. Um, one day I added sweet orange to it. I blended that all up and I layered it with my Asmar So Oud, which has a coffee note in it. And it's, oh, it was so gorgeous. So get creative, have lots of fun where this is concerned. Um, I also use my essential oils in my um, diffuser that I sleep with at night, my mister. So there's so many different things that you can do with them. Now, on the flip side of that is purchasing body oils. So these days, you just don't hear a lot of people talk about body oils, but there's a, a site that I absolutely love and I'm not paid or sponsored by them, but it's fragrantbodyoils.com. You guys hear me talk about them all the time. I love their oils. Now, what I will do when I have a fragrance that might be kind of struggling in the longevity department and they don't offer the matching um, lotion or shower gel or whatever, um, I will purchase a body oil. And this is Rose's Vanille. Now, anyone who has ever smelled Rose's Vanille, you know it's not struggling in the longevity department, but I'm extra. So <laughs> I will take the Rose's Vanille body oil and I add a few drops of it to my unscented shower gel. I shower in it. Then I'll add a few drops of it to my unscented lotion, lotion myself down with it. And 
then you have a masterpiece. You are going to be smelling all freaking day long, all day long. And if you're not, call me because I'm telling you. Now, the one thing that I talked about this in a video before, when I order these oils, especially when I order them for a fragrance that I already own, I definitely do a side-by-side -side comparison and I make sure that they're pretty much dead on. I want them to be as close as they can possibly be when I'm using them for the purpose of layering them with the exact same fragrance. So you want to make sure that they smell the same. Now, they also offer body lotions and um, they're, they have fragrance oils in them, but they're body lotions. And so this lotion is Tom Ford Lavender Extreme. So you guys know I already own the original Tom Ford Lavender Extreme, but again, I'm extra. So <laughs> I purchased this lotion and when I wear Tom Ford Lavender Extreme, I layer it with this and this is dead on and it is absolutely freaking gorgeous. So um, another one that I have, another body lotion I have is YSO Black Opium. And this is from Fragrant Body Oils as well. I'm going to link their information in the description box. They need to call me one day because I'm always plugging them. But they have great oils. And the thing that really gets me about them is that they are up on their niche game. They really are. So I have fallen in love with their oils. And just for the purpose of layering and blending my fragrances, I freaking love them. So. So now for the last part of this video, One Note Wonders, where the work has already been done for you. <laughs> you don't have to do any mixing. You don't have to do any blending. These are One Note Wonders. Two of these, I, I really like to refer to these as boosters because I have Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, and I have Eccentric Molecule 01, which I feel like can really totally switch up what a fragrance is doing for you. I like to lay down Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume with many things. So a few beauties, a few tips. Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume with FN Fabulous. Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume with Lost Cherry. Juliet has a gun, not a perfume, with effing fabulous and lost cherry, D-O-P-E. I, I The day I wore that, the very first time I wore it, I got so many compliments on that blend. And people were asking me, what did I have on? And I didn't want to be like, Juliet has a gun, lost cherry, effing fabulous. But I, I just said, I have on Tom Ford, effing fabulous. Um, Very nice. Molecule 01, which I like to lay down under like my woodies, pretty much. Sometimes I like to lay down Molecule 01 underneath my Orientals or underneath my vanilla fragrances. So it's just about finding what blend works for you. Don't do this on date night when you're getting ready to go out with Bay, And then you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try it. Don't do that. I usually like to come in here, break out my little oils and my kits and things, test some things out first, and then see what we come up with. And then if it works, you can use it for a special occasion. Now, and the last thing is One Note fragrances that you can purchase for layering. They are made specifically for layering. These I have are from Alexandria Be Layered. They're not paying me either, and they didn't give me these for free. I bought these kits with my own money. So I have here kiwi, strawberry, peach. I have their vanilla, their coconut, their jasmine. Their, I, I love these. I am pretty much obsessed with these because, again, I will take a fragrance like my Breath of Infinite, um, which has a very prominent peach note and layer it with this peach. Peach works well with musk as well. Peach layers very well with this New York amber, which is not amber in my opinion, but you know, I didn't name it, they did. So 
Those are some of my layering and blending techniques. If you have any layering and blending techniques, I know this video was long. This is actually the first video in a long time that I have had to do in sections. So because it was so long. So let me know, share your layering tips and tricks with me because I'm always up for learning something new. So thank you guys so much for watching me. Until I see you again, be blessed and bye for now.